how are you doing? Uh, my name is Tavel. I'm from GFL, the family, and I'm really excited today. Althea is going to be joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know, Althea has been one of our first affiliates and she's become like family to us. And today we're going to be talking about the collective energy that we're all feeling, you know, since, you know, um, the solar eclipse. of you know impact on on all of us so we want to talk a little bit about that and like how is everybody feeling after that hello <laughs> hi gorgeous can, can you hear me can you see me yes okay yes i think i could it's working now it was semi frozen hi oh, are you so nice to see you too <laughs> How's it being back home? Good, good. We're going into winter here, so a bit of a change. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to the next few months. I'm going to be back in LA in June, so hi! Hey! Hey, hey Althea! <laughs> Althea! How nice to see you guys. Beautiful, Althea. How are you? <laughs> We're coming so back nice. For the Disclosure Fest, right? Yeah, I'm coming back for Disclosure Fest. I'm going to be doing my own work also on the 28th. And then I'm actually doing an event um, with some other collaborators on the 7th of July in San Diego. So the 7th, 7th. Wow, how exciting. Uh, but your thing is still doing, like we can hear. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave, okay? I'm going to let you speak because something is always off with my uh... <laughs> So you're coming back for Disclosure Fest, yes? Yes, okay. yes. I'll be doing a day or two before and then I'll be holding a workshop on the Saturday. Um, have you been? Sorry, I've never been, but we might be vendors this year. We're still trying to figure out the logistics of everything, but I hear it's amazing. What are you going to speak about? So I'll probably just be doing um, some somatic body work release, so some TRE, and then I'll be doing some light language. And then I think I'll probably just take questions. I've got a 90 minute slot. Um, so yeah, I'll see. I, I'm not really planning on like planning it too much. I'm mm -hmm. going to kind of like feel it out maybe the day before and then go with the flow. Okay. Um, it'll be nice. I want to, uh, you know, uh, for from a difference compared to the Conscious Life Expo, I want to give more space to the people who are there this time so that, you know, people can come with questions and more like, yeah, conversation rather than me, like, you know, teaching and whatnot. But then I'll still be doing some light language and some, some body work as well. Okay, beautiful. Sounds like you have a good direction that you want to go in and then you're going to like make it sort of like a um, uh, collaborative with the audience and what they need and like feeling their energy, which is really great. Always great yeah. to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. So how has it been after, you know, um, the Conscious Life Expo? How were you feeling a few days after that? Was it draining for you? Was it invigorating for you? Like, how was it yeah. integrating all of that? Like, I loved LA. <laughs> you definitely need to move out here. We're yeah. ready for you. Okay. David, so funny. And then my other friend was like, that I was staying with at Mystic Manor. She was like, she was like saying, speaking to her partner and saying, yeah, like she's so LA, like she fit right in. And I was like, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Like, that is, like, I just love the energy there. And I have to say, compared to New York, like I found New York quite dense because I flew to New York the week after to do some energy work there. I did some grid work. I did some one-on-one -on -one activations and I did two workshops, actually one in New York and one in New Jersey. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it was great. I'm going to do the Conscious Life Expo again next year. They've already contacted me, so I'm very happy to do that. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a beautiful energy, lots of really amazing people, lots of beautiful connection. Um, no, like I felt really empowered. I didn't really feel drained at all. Like I felt I was, my energy felt more drained when I was in Manhattan, if I'm going to okay. be honest. Yeah, LA, I found it like, yeah, I found actually the grid very peaceful and welcoming. I don't know if it's also the people that I met um, and who I was hanging out with. Um, like we had lots of fun together. We so <laughs> we went shopping. We went out. We were we were taken on the town. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. 
literally so um so yeah so that was kind of like my my impression of it but we'll see now the second time when i come back and yeah it'll be interesting to see san diego as well yes, absolutely and maybe even mount shasta this time i hear it's a yeah let's see how far is it from la um i think it might be like two hour drive i think i'm not sure probably around the same distance maybe more i'm actually i i'm not sure but I hear it's worth the drive. <laughs> okay. No, I have not been, but um, our, you met uh, Gail Fuller, the yes. bougie healer. Yeah. She hosts retreats there all the time and from everything that I've heard from her, it's amazing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people that were also at the ex like work in Mount Shasta and around that area. Yes very um, potent energies. Speaking of, how was the uh, solar eclipse for you? <laughs> so, I mean, for me, it was more the days in between the lunar and the solar one. Okay. I must say, those were the days where I felt the most, um, like quite a bit of sleepless nights and a lot of clearing. Um, it did level out, but I had also days where I was like, irritated i would get up and be like don't talk to me stay away from me like i was just yeah i was just, like processing uh, for myself for the collective um the sleepless wasn't too bad because generally when i do sleepless nights it's because they're working or i'm clearing um i mean and it's never completely like sleepless i maybe sleep like three hours or something like that which is i usually sleep like seven hours is generally my standard i can function very well on five and six sometimes i'll sleep eight uh but like three is like pushing it you know mm -hmm. three or four hours is pushing it but when it's these big like energetic things that happen that they affect my sleeping pattern i don't really get tired the day after like i'm still fine so that was nice to kind of like you know um experience and then I've a lot going on in the astral so i released a series of um, reels around that time that were speaking about there was quite a big dimensional tear between the 3D and the 40s. So a lot of souls were kind of coming in and being cleared and being released as well. Um, and what's happening right now is quite interesting. I just released a reel on that today. There's a lot of clearing that's happening on an ancestral level. And I was shown this image of these souls um, that had almost like these cords coming out and connecting to other souls and to Mother Gaia and these cords and shackles like breaking free. And as those broke free, these souls from the heart center light came out and engulfed them and expanded them. Mm. Um, so a lot of people are moving through like, you know, arguments and, you know, triggers with family and things like that. Um, and in the astral space as well, this is kind of like what came up that's happening now, which is almost like a residual energy. But I do feel like the solar eclipse energy did level out in the last week. Mm. I, I actually did see that that video about sovereignty and like a, yeah. a huge sovereignty. like um, shift and like getting free. And and for me, that resonated on like not only like a spiritual level, but like also like on some sort of like emotional level, like free of like old traumas, free of like the stories that we tell ourselves, free of like um, the insecurities that like keep us down and like keep us like from really connecting with other people and like, and showing our most, showing up as our most authentic and, and vulnerable self sometimes. So I really, I really love that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sure. And this year is all about, you know, stepping into your power, showing yourself, shining, you know. Um, so, so definitely, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited, like, to see what happens, you know, throughout the year and mm -hmm. how things evolve. Um, I mean, it's been quite an eventful 2024 for me personally, but also I think on a collective level as well, yeah. Right. And this year is a, a year eight, right? Manifestation. Abundance. Very big. Abundance. I, I remember, I remember you telling me, now I tell everybody, I'm like, girl, you can manifest anything you want. This <laughs> year is your year. <laughs> you um, someone wrote, I'm still having headaches, ear ringing, and flu symptoms from what I believe from the, being from the eclipse. Um, I actually had a headache for like two days, the day of the eclipse and like after. So maybe that's residual energies. Yeah, it wouldn't Could be. Yeah, hydrate, rest, drink lots of water. And sometimes when we get these symptoms, yeah, this is what they're saying to me now, sometimes 
there are parts that are wanting to be seen that you're not looking at mm. um, wanting to be observed and sometimes our guides get our attention in that way so really checking in you know if there is something that you're missing whether it's a conversation that you need to have mm -hmm. or someone you need something you need to release um, because generally when it lasts like quite long there's usually something else as well for sure um alicia asks would you be able to connect to a soul if we gave you the name yeah but i don't generally do individual work on like if it's like you know i'm on the live on things like that i'll generally answer like collective questions and something that can right. be useful for anyone um because i get it quite a lot like i don't really do like per se personal questions because uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's rather use the time to assist everyone, yeah. but I can do that. book a session. I can do that for you. Book a session. Um, also someone asked for someone new to awakening and just realized it. What advice would you give them? Say your truth. And this is a question you asked me when we were at the <laughs> expo. <Yeah. laughs> it is, it yeah. is in your truth and you're not going crazy i'm going to repeat the same thing i did <laughs> you're not going mad um but yeah say your truth stay grounded hydrate drink lots of water trust yourself um yeah and follow your intuition i mean we have all the answers within us all the time so it's really just a matter of fine-tuning that compass and being able to say okay like this is what I feel. This is the direction I'm going. And if you're struggling with a decision, turn to the body, um, turn to a somatic response. The body will know if you, if you think about something and you feel sick, like don't go that direction. If you, you know, think about something and it brings you joy, calmness, happiness, then that's probably, you know, the direction you want to, you want to, you want to go. And first of all, that's beautiful because I think so many people are disconnected from their bodies, like me having been one of them and like not really trusting my intuition, not trusting like, um you know my higher self and like innate knowledge and intelligence but as well as like finding your community that could be like so important and and with platforms like instagram like they really help us like bridge together like those gaps those people from all over the world that are just like you that are experiencing the same things that you do that can talk to you and you know be there to support you and, and love you through every stage of of the spiritual awakening yeah yeah yeah, I really feel that. And I've seen such a huge shift in the social media platform in the past two, three years. Like it's literally like been assisting, you know, um, the ascension process and exponentially growing. I mean, while before it was like little bits here and there, now we all very connected and communicating and, you know, assisting and helping each other. So for sure, definitely like finding your soul tribe is a big one. Do you feel that lower energies are stepping out globally, enterprises, governments, etc.? So again, guys, like, I mean, you always have to take these things with a pinch of salt. <laughs> um, I try to stay in a space where I don't really want to speak about anything that creates division and polarization. I try to hold a frequency of neutrality. Having said that, in my personal experience and from my understanding, this is a year where things will come to the surface. How that is gonna happen and what it means on a more practical level, you know, there's so many timelines, you can't predict it, but the frequency of this year definitely anchors into that. Okay. And I think that goes along with your theme of like sovereignty too, you know, new things coming. Maybe like, it also brings to mind like the tower card in tarot. Do you know which one I'm talking yeah. about? Everything's crumbling and then like a new new beginning. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And when do you what is your perspective on like because there's conflicting um conversations about, you know, we already are in the five D, we can tap into the five D like whenever we want, or like the five D new earth is like gonna be in like twenty thirty or twenty forty or what do you feel, are there any like downloads that you've had regarding like that? So, I mean, we are all accessing the 5D already on an individual level. You know, when you're operating from joy, from unconditional love, from truth, from compassion, those are all fifth dimensional density um emotions you know um so when you imagine the, the the dimensions they're generally all overlapping anyway but on a 
practical level, which I think is more like what you're asking, like, what are we going to see? Um, yeah, I think it'll definitely take, you know, some years. Um, what I'm seeing is a, a financial redistribution of, mm -hmm. you know, these people having access to water, electricity, shelter, food, you know, um, definitely more of that happening. Um, from a planetary level, Mother Gaia is still going to be clearing her karma. Um, so what, you know, can still be happening, which has been happening for, you know, millions and thousands of years is we can possibly still be having like earthquakes or tornadoes or things like that, but nothing like dramatic. There's not, I mean, I don't see any apocalyptic timeline happening. I mean, those are being cleared in the astral. So don't worry guys, there's people like me and others that are clearing those. So we're not gonna get a apocalyptic timeline. So don't worry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, they literally send me to clear like whole timelines where the world is gonna end. And it's not just me, it's like maybe me and another like 10 or 20 energy workers. Um, oh so, my God. Yeah, yeah. That they don't happen and i've been doing it for like maybe three or four years now i'll have like phases like two three months out of like a year or every six to eight months where that's all that i'm doing um and there's a lot of other energy workers who are there with me doing it as well babe you probably assisting as well like i wouldn't be surprised because you were in my astral i think it was like two three weeks ago that you were i remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> you did I get a text from Althea and she, the, no context, no, hey, hi, how are you? She goes, I saw you in the astral realm and I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, we went to some kind of event and we you were pointing out some souls that needed healing and I would like go and assist them. It was quite cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time that happens to me with someone like, yeah, it's, I just message him. I'm like, because I do it as soon as I wake up because I repeat and I don't want to forget it. So the first thing that I do is like I tell them. So yeah, yeah. It was, I knew you were going to laugh and be like, you're this chick. <laughs> She's from another planet, babe. Eh? No, I loved it. It was honestly like, I feel like one of the highest compliments if someone can pay you. Like, oh, I saw you in the astral. I'm like, what was I doing there? Like, <laughs> it was so cute. I, I truly, I truly, I loved, I loved that dream. And then you sent me a couple voice notes sort of going through it. And, and it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody asked about the dynamics of like the divine family feminine and like the masculine uh the divine masculine and like how that sort of like it interplays with each other because i think i think as women are becoming more independent maybe it's harder for us to get in touch with our like softness or like vulnerable like divine masculine sort of like um going back to like source and like center and 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 really tapping into that as well as like finding that equal and opposite energy to sort of counterbalance and like make a be beautiful karmic and soul pairing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think um, what we're seeing is the divine feminine rising after, you know, many years of not being able to rise, like really, really rise. Um, the masculine is catching up so energetically what i'm seeing is the feminine and kind of like the masculine here the feminine dragging and the masculine here the feminine dragging not for everyone not for every masculine not for every feminine obviously like just from a generic um perspective so definitely for sure i mean for a balanced union in my opinion both parts need to have both balanced um within themselves but definitely in a divine union like the feminine you know she channels she opens she creates mm -hmm. and the masculine holds the container it grounds it balances it keeps the presence it it allows the feminine to soften and be in her feminine having said that a woman who is operating from the masculine side doesn't necessarily mean that she's not in her feminine mm. if it makes sense very big confusion and misconception you know um you, uh, uh, men are like oh no like a woman and she's working and she's business oriented and she's this and she's in her masculine no you just intimidated because you, you 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 just feel like she's doing what you're supposed to be doing. It doesn't mean that she can't be feminine and inner feminine. So it's a very broad spectrum subject and there's a lot of controversy around it. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I started reading 
be following this Australian guy and he's, I think he's incredible. And he, um, he comments all these videos that these, these men with microphones make. And he's like, oh, man with microphone, he knows better than woman. And it's these men telling women how they should be and what they should be doing and how feminine they should be and if they should be having kids or not kids or whatnot. And this okay. oak is like, these guys like they not women they don't know you know why are they telling women what they must be doing it's like me going and saying no a man should do this this that and that you know that can be your own opinion your own projection your own want and need from a union it doesn't have to you know apply on a global level and on a global scale so it's interesting with the social media being so open um how everyone all of a sudden is an expert master psychologist in the divine masculine mm. feminine balance mm. Mm. okay a lot of things resonated very deeply. Um, I feel like from my own like personal, even though I do have hope in like love and like and like karmic and divine unions, I think, you know, with social media like going how it is, like dating apps, like the the sacred aspect of like, you know, that that soul recognizing soul is sort of a lot rarer to find. Not impossible, but like a lot harder to you know really does that make sense i don't know yeah <laughs> i mean there's definitely more distractions mm -hmm. there's definitely more distractions but again i mean i think if someone's done the work like the distractions they're not going to matter mm -hmm. it's not going to be a part of of their reality um but for sure like i mean i don't know i mean during wartime like people send letters to each other mm. now like opposite you know so i guess there's the pros and the cons <laughs> you, know, you know when they were away for six months at war and or like two years <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh my goodness and well did you ever read the book <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> so i did but i got up to like yeah i stopped reading it not because it wasn't interesting but just because i started reading after other stuff but i got to where she's in the house and she's held like sort of like hostage sort of thing right. but it reminds me of a handmaid's tale it's based on handmaid's tale okay, but so um then. i just i just had to ask <laughs> but um isn't it crazy that i think we've been working together for like almost two two years now yeah. correct yeah i think you were one of the first people that we like brought into our gfl family and it's been like so amazing like connecting with you and like having an actual friendship and like having you come to la and like well we haven't been to south africa yet but when we go to south africa <laughs> coming to visit you um and it really just feels like family like soul family you know like we met for the first time at the conscious life expo and it was just like like oh hey like we just recognize i i think and me and you spent a lot of time together which was so lovely and and it's been so great yeah it's been so beautiful babe and i was just saying you know like it's literally like family away from home mm -hmm. like you guys remind me so much of like italians and how we are and like there's <laughs> so much i think cultural like similarities that we have you know mm -hmm. and it was really um funny at the expo because your stall was like base camp <laughs> like, all the energy workers and all the light workers that kind of knew each other they were all like oh you didn't know where to go okay like we go into the gfl stall <laughs> <laughs> and for those who don't know who are on here uh, me and my family have a company called gfl apparel where we make clothing for light workers star seeds and everybody in between and you know represent you guys in the fashion community and give you high vibrational clothing by the way how do you like the new star seed collection babe i love them oh. i love them they're wait i can't hear you oh no can you hear me? yes okay <laughs> yeah sorry my, my phone just told me that you know when it goes in like low power saving mm -hmm. mode yes yeah, so it froze. Um, but I'm actually traveling tomorrow and I'm gonna wear them. And for me, like their clothes are the best because they literally amplify your frequency and they literally assist you in healing. It is like clothes that are infused 
light and love. And it's so like serendipitous how we connected because um, I knew about them and I was like, oh my God, like I love these guys. I had seen your clothes on Elizabeth April and I was like, wow, like I need to get some of them and whatnot. And then I think like a week or two after I got contacted and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, and literally like all, every single item that I have of yours, um, it's almost like with the gray, like it's a, it's more grounding. Like with the Merkaba, like it, I feel it very grounding within my system. And um, with the like kind of like the more lighter one, like the white ones, I feel very expanded. Mm -hmm. And what I've also noticed, and it could be me that I've coded them in this way, but it could be part of the clothing. They assist me in cloaking. So when I travel, I do cloaking on my energy field and especially the hoodies. If I'm wearing the hoodies, like I feel like the clothes assist with my cloaking device. I, I don't know how, how better I can explain it than that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. And, and just your feedback, it means the world to us. And, and it's been such a, such a journey to get here and, and, you know, putting the intention and the love and like our hearts, like into it and making sure that it is the most, um, helpful for anybody wherever they're at they're at in you know their spiritual journey but um yeah i would someone's, love to hear from what were you gonna say someone's asking if there's kid kids clothes maybe the next stop you do like a kiddies clothes maybe for elizabeth we actually created some little cute uh for her baby Bodie. we created some little star seed stuff but it was the work we're not there yet, but maybe in the future. <laughs> Someone's asking what's cloaking. Oh, okay. So basically cloaking um, energetically, I cloak my energy field every time I travel just because when you're operating at a certain level because of the polarity of the universe that we live in, you tend sometimes occasionally to be more prone to psychic attacks. Having said that, everything around you is a manifestation of you. So I don't want people to go around like, being scared and saying, oh, I'm going to get psychically attacked or whatnot. But when you are, when you carry a certain vibrational frequency and responsibility and container on a collective level, um, it's just convenient to cloak yourself when you travel. Let's put it that way, you know, especially when you're actually in spaces with a lot of people and things like that. Um, so shielding and cloaking, um, yeah, can be like, you know, really, really convenient and useful. Um, can I explain what a psychic attack is? <laughs> okay, no, this I can't brief this this cannot be explained briefly, but I do have a workshop on my website that you guys can can take, which speaks about psychic attacks. And I've got an ebook on psychic attacks and energy cords as well. It's not something that I can condense in like a <laughs> you know, like a two-minute message. Okay. Okay. And those are, you know, important things to know going into this sort of uh community. Because yeah, I think it's good to have knowledge and awareness of everything. Never out of fear, always out of love. So I'm never like cloaking myself because I'm scared. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just easier and then you don't cue and like people don't really see you. But it just makes life a little bit easier when you cloak yourself. Yeah. Um, I personally would love to hear some light language well, if you're open to doing it. <laughs> Are you of ready? course. Of yes. So you can just close your eyes body as you guys find a comfortable breathing rhythm with inhale you breathe in light and with every exhale you release all that doesn't serve you anymore as you relax the body the system the energy field you stay in a space of openness and oneness and as we call on the Archangelic Collective, Michael to the south, Uriel to the north, Raphael to the east, and Gabriel to the west, we call on Archangel Metatron with his blue cloak of protection from above and Sandalphon to seal the grid from below. As we call on our higher selves as spirit guides and anyone else who wishes to be present for the greatest and highest good, you're welcome in the space. Mm -hmm. 
Jo, 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 ta jo, ta jo, 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 Expanding, 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 calling in divine rays, anchoring, 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 tuning, 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 releasing, 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 opening, releasing, opening, 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 two more light divine rays, anchoring, 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 Blueprint upgrade coming in, activating, 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 activating dormant DNA, activating, activating systems, connecting, connecting synapses, tuning, 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 neurotransmitters, Recycling, releasing, 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 releasing toxins, expanding, 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 extracting, 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 letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go, programs, releasing, 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 a tuning, a tuning, a tuning, a tuning, nya, 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 karya, ishira, ishira, ta kriya, tur kukukuro, ishi, taka, triya te asye na rakia, aru kuko ishi, chia se asya, siya ratra, triya kreo kua ishi, na ta, ya re ishi, isho kua ishi, asye saraya ishi, chia sa tse kua ishi, isha siya, sa chisha siya sara, Closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, 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 ceiling, closing, ceiling, closing, ceiling, clearing peripheral, tuning, 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 grounding, 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 anchoring, running, anchoring, 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 ancho
my well everyone's channel but the way i use my channel my channel operates on a multi-dimensional level so it's not just one channel so when i'm channeling on a collective level is different to when i'm channeling for myself to when i'm channeling for an individual client if it makes sense um sensations in the body can be different um yeah it really 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 depends i generally channel from higher versions of myself but what happens when i do these lives it's interesting because i feel like all the teams of everyone on the live and who is meant to receive, they're all here. So they're all giving some kind of input. They're all tuning into um, some kind of collective frequency. And then I send out assistance for whoever, you know, needs and receives it. Yeah. Does it ever feel like draining for you? No. Or is it like... No, not anymore. Um, it used to many years ago, but you see, because of how my system operates, um, I work with a team of over 300 beings just from my side, basically. And um, it's very interesting because channeling like, gives me energy. It's the opposite. It energizes me. When I go off this, I'm not going to go to sleep. Like I'll have to like meditate and ground, you know, and whatnot. So um, some people find it draining. It's different star seeds and different uh, beings and different humans operate in different ways. Some people feel very somatically. So they feel a lot in the gut, in the solar plexus, and they feel the emotions and things like that. And that can be quite draining. Um, for me, like, I, I'm like, I'm a machine. Like I work like a machine. I go in, I do, I get the job done, I get out. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any attachment to what I am doing. So I'm not personally, emotionally involved in it because it's not about me. It's about the information. It's about the healing. It's about the channel. So I operate from a frequency that doesn't allow for me to... You know, because if I had attachment to what I was doing, I'm like, oh my God, like, is this going to work? Is it working well? Is it, you know, then that will probably end up draining because that would mean, you know, there's an ego attachment, leakages and whatnot. Because I operate from a space where it's unconditional love and I don't have attachment, I guess um, it doesn't really end up draining me at all. So again, I can't speak for others. This is how my system works, yeah. you know. And your light language is so different from, from others that I've heard. Is there like... um uh a like what language are you speaking like where where do you come from <laughs> so um all the different light languages that people speak have different infusions of different galactic beings or more earth-based mm -hmm. so you'll recognize the ones that are more kind of like earth-based compared to the galactic ones so again at my um at the expo i did differentiate and speak a lot about the different ones so for me personally i've got a mixture of a lot of different high versions of myself um i do a little bit of mantis a little bit of pleiadian i do have some earth-based um light language within my system as well sometimes i'll channel angelics sometimes i'll just channel Victorian technology so it really depends um it can't really be translated verbatim um so word by word but you can kind of like get a feeling and for me like i'll say what i'm doing as i'm doing it mm -hmm. sort of thing so um now i can switch it's um you know light language english i love um, it yeah, yeah. And, and it, I mean, everyone has their own methodology and their own way of channeling. For me, I don't trans channel. I'm very present. I'm very embodied. I'm here. I know what's going on, what's happening and what I'm doing. Some people trans channel and they just like forget and then come back. Um, I, I tend to channel very present. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it because you know, sort of like what is happening when it's happening. And, and I, I, I love it. And, um, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for just doing that for us and for everyone here. It was special. And thank you guys for being present and, and for joining this journey with us. It was lovely. I'm still like coming too. Yep. So I'm like a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Um, I can't see you guys again soon. And yeah, if you guys want to find me, you can just hop over to my profile and all my links are in my bio. Maybe add me as a collaborator so that sure. this goes also my profile. So, Beautiful. Um, yeah, more people okay. can, you know, can get and get the healing and check out their clothes, guys. Like really, they are so amazing, so incredible. Um, yeah, and like the, the, the new Starseed collection with the blue, like I just love it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much. Um, we love all of you and we'll see you guys next time. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, Althea.